a company called MCO Plus or MCO Plus, I'm not exactly sure how to say it to be honest with you, sent me over these two microphones to test out and especially this on camera version, I put through a lot of abuse yesterday so I want to talk about it today. <laughs> Uh, sorry for the rough video, this is quite an unexpected event today. I'll give you a quick little review of some tests and my overall thoughts on it. So, let's get into it. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do consider subscribing. We do all kinds of test reviews, unboxings, anything photo and video related. So if you like the content today, please do consider subscribing and hit the little bell icon when you do so to make sure you get notifications when new content is uploaded. So like I said, MCO Plus did send me a couple different versions of this microphone to test out. They do have different names, but basically they're the same microphone just with different mounts or different connections. And this is the one here that I've been putting through its paces. This is the VMDO2, sorry I had to double check that. Um, it's, it's a tiny little microphone and uh, it has its pluses and its minuses and we're gonna go through that today. So with a tiny little microphone like this, the two big benefits for me are going to be the price and the size. Price wise, I'm actually not sure. I've been trying to search for the price of this specific microphone for a while and I can't find it. So I will put that information on screen before this review is actually posted, but I assume it's gonna be pretty affordable. And the thing that you have to think of is at around 50 or $60, you can pick up the Rode Video Micro, which is from a well-known company and that microphone is rock solid. I don't have it here to test side by side, but I have owned it in the past and it's all metal. It's really well built and it's road. You know, you're going to get a good audio quality out of it. So these microphones from MCO plus are all plastic. So there's a build quality difference there, but how much does that matter in a microphone this size? I'm not really sure, but uh, I'm hoping that the price will reflect that. Of course, I expect it will. Um, and if it does, then, you know, if you want to save a little bit more money, then you know you can do that. Or if you wanna pick up a few of these, maybe that little bit of savings can help you grab two of them instead of one. You know, there's definitely benefits to having that lower price point. And when you're at this lower price point, it's you know how much does that little bit extra really matter to you? Neither of those microphones, either this one from the MCO Plus nor the Rode microphone, have any uh, internal preamp built into them. So the good point is they don't need any batteries. They're always gonna be ready to go whether you've charged them or not. Well, you can't charge them, but you don't need to think about charging them. I just plug them in and they're ready to go. But the downside of that is that that you're gonna to have to rely on your in-camera preamp a little bit more. Either way, they're both gonna be pretty similar in that aspect, but this microphone in particular does put out a hot enough signal that I didn't have to really boost up the audio in my camera all that much, so I think I should be able to get a fairly clean audio out of it, but we will test that a little bit later in this video. Now the other benefit of a microphone like this is of course the size and it's really tiny and especially because of the plastic build it's also very lightweight so it's something that's very unobtrusive you know you can pop it on top of your camera you can take it off throw it in your pocket and I did yesterday like I said I put it through quite a lot of abuse I was shoving it into my pocket shoving it into my camera bag we were out in the snow and light rain which I don't recommend doing but uh, I taped it up the connections as much as I could just to protect it at least somewhat, but uh, it, it handled it really well. The shock mount didn't break, it didn't lose its form or anything like that. Um, it does seem like it can stand up to a certain amount of abuse. But that compact form factor allowed me to do all of that. It allowed me to shove it in my pocket. It allowed me to shove it into a little, you know, side section of my bag. It doesn't take up extra space and it's something that, you know, you can always have it with you. If you don't need it, just take it off and shove it in your pocket and it's always ready to go. And for me, that's really a huge benefit of having a little tiny microphone like this. You don't need to remember to charge the batteries and you don't need to really take up a lot of space to bring it with you. If you're using smaller cameras that have maybe really wide angle lenses too, that smaller form factor also means it's much less likely to poke out into your image when you're using that wide angle lens. A longer microphone is maybe gonna have the chance to actually show up in your image if you're using a wide angle lens on a smaller camera, uh, but this shouldn't be a problem in most of those cases. In terms of the package that you get here though, it's a pretty complete package though. So for example, the VMDO2 comes with a carry case. It comes with two cables, one for a smartphone, one for a DSLR or you know a camera. And it comes with the foam wind cover. It comes with the furry wind cover for more wind protection, which we'll talk about in a second. It comes with, of course, the microphone itself and the shock mount. The VMPO one, which is a smartphone version, which clips right onto your phone, which I honestly didn't really test that much because I don't have any phone with a 3.5 millimeter input. All my phones use lightning cables, but that is pretty much the same microphone and it comes with pretty much the same accessories except for obviously the shock mount. Either way, you have a pretty complete package here and I was happy to see that. 
One other point I really liked about this microphone that I want to mention here is that the shock mount actually can click into different uh, positions. So you can twist it around, uh, you know, at like 45 degrees to the side or 90 degrees to the side or 180 degrees reversed and it actually clicks into that position. You don't have to remove it and turn it around. Um, it, it's really, really convenient, you know, when you're running around and maybe you want somebody in the front of the camera to be talking and then you want to turn the microphone around so you can talk to the camera while you're recording something that's in front of you. Or even, you know, if you're using a wide angle lens or something and you're standing off to the side a little bit and you want to be able to show something on the other side of you, but you want the microphone to be pointed towards you, you can twist it just, you know, at a 45 degree angle so that way it's pointed towards you even though the camera is not directly pointed at you. And that was actually extremely useful for me and I really, really appreciated the way that they designed that shock mount. It was something that honestly surprised me and I haven't really seen it before. So that's a really, really big win in a small way for me with this microphone. On that note though, one thing that was kind of weird is that it comes with this extra little kind of uh, wraparound piece to wrap around the microphone where the shock mount mounts onto it uh, because the microphone itself is too small for the shock mount. So that was kind of weird. It's just an extra piece that does allow the microphone to kind of spin around a little bit more. Um, and just, I don't know why they didn't make the microphone the correct size for the shock mount in the first place. Doesn't seem to be any uh, big problem. I didn't really notice any major handling noise issues because of that extra loose piece in between. Um, but I thought it was worth mentioning that it was kind of a weird way to design that, I thought. There may be something I'm missing here, something really stupidly simple that I'm missing. Um, and if I am, then I apologize. So besides the form factor and the price, the other important thing, of course, is the sound quality. You know, how good does it sound? And things like how well does the furry wind protection actually provide wind protection? Uh, how well does it reject off axis noise and things like that? So we're gonna put it through a couple of tests. Like I said, I have been using it for a couple of days, but it was on some, you know, just random trips with my friends. So it wasn't anything that we really cared too much about the audio. So we didn't pay too much attention to it. This is right near the place where we just had lunch and we're just coming down to see the water here. This is Nyoto Blue, but uh, whew, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. <laughs> this is going to be a challenging walk here. I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous. It probably doesn't translate on screen as much as I wish it would, but it is absolutely gorgeous here. Look at that. Look at that. So we didn't have time uh, because we're going to be locked up here if we don't go back before they continue the construction. Uh, so we didn't have time to go down to Sui Shobuchi, but uh, I think we found a pretty awesome place already, so. Yeah. We're here in Muroto, which is the most eastern part of Kochi in Shikoku, and we're going to go check out this temple, um, but we're going to put it through some more careful testing right now. All right, so for a quick kind of controlled wind test, I'm just going to take the furry wind protection off of there, and I'm going to use this foam core board and just blow wind at the microphone, and then I'll put the just foam cover on there, do it once again, and then I'll put the furry cover on there and do it once again, so you can hear incrementally how much, hopefully, each of those uh, help against wind noise. So along the river, there are a bunch of places we can stop and see like different types of scenery, you know, the rapids and some waterfalls here and there. You've got like, you know, this beach area where you can do a barbecue right next to there. That is one of the huge benefits of walking this course is you get some really beautiful scenery along the way. So we'll try and do what we can to show you that as well. So now to get an idea of off-axis rejection, I'm going to do two tests. I'm going to do one with just a noise uh, generator on my phone and move it around the microphone. And then I'm going to take it outside and actually talk to the microphone from different angles because I also want to see not only from you know 90 degrees to the side and behind the microphone how much it rejects audio, but also just how it sounds when I move slightly off-axis because as you're moving the camera around, talking to the camera in a vlog, then obviously you're not always going to be perfectly in front of the microphone. So as you move off to the side a little bit, if it really has colored, uh, awkward, weird audio, then that's not something that's good. So we're going to test that as well. Excuse the brightness behind me, but uh, this is 
I, I'm not holding the camera, but uh, this is about you know an arm's length away from me. So if you're vlogging with this microphone, uh, this is about how it would sound. And there is a bit of wind right now, and I don't have the furry wind protection on there. I wanted to test how my voice sounds without it, and then how it sounds with it, just to see if there's any difference. You know, if it cuts out too much of that high frequency. I don't think it will because this is fairly thin. Uh, but we'll check that anyway and also just to see in real life with a little bit of real wind how much it is actually affected by that wind. So let's go ahead and throw this on there and then we'll move on to the uh, off-axis rejection test. Okay, so now the furry uh, wind cover is on there, and again, we have some wind. This is actually a stronger wind than before, so uh, we'll really get to see how well this wind protection does work in a real-world situation. Uh, yesterday when I was using it, it was really quite windy, so it didn't completely cut that wind noise out. I noticed when looking back at the footage, but that was a pretty strong wind. So this is more of you know a breeze with an occasional stronger breeze like right now. So if the, it does the job well enough in this situation, I think then that's pretty effective. But I also, like I said, want to see if it really affects the audio quality, the tone of my voice compared to without that on there. So now I'm going to just walk off to the side a little bit and as I walk off axis from the microphone off to the side of the screen, you know if I was talking like this and I wanted to introduce something that's over here, I'm now probably on close to a 45 degree uh, angle from the microphone and of course with this one like I said that shock mount you can twist it 45 degrees to be straight at you even when the camera is not which is great but you know still you're going to find yourself moving from side to side and you're not going to always want to touch the microphone to move it so if you're off axis this is how it's going to sound compared to when you're in the center again moving off axis this is going to be how it sounds sorry for my mumbling here I can't really speak clear enough blah, blah. but uh, this is again how it sounds right in the middle when I'm directly on axis with the microphone. Now I'm going to walk all the way to the side and all the way behind it again just to see how well it rejects or reacts to my voice when it's completely off axis. So here I go off to the side and now I'm at about the same distance but off 90 degrees from the microphone and now as I walk behind the microphone now I'm about the same distance but directly behind the microphone. Now as I said the actual audio level here is not that bad when I'm about an arm's distance away on the Canon EOS R I have it set to probably just the about first notch down from the bottom uh, on the in-camera audio level so that's actually a pretty acceptable signal even when I'm using something with a preamp built into the microphone I'm usually dialing in right about that level so um, hopefully this audio should sound good again we'll get back we'll see how the frequency response is and everything um, I haven't looked at it overly carefully just yet so you know you're hearing it along with me so like I said before, I think for me, it's gonna come down to the price versus the, I guess you could say quality or reliability of this. You know, this is a relatively unknown company versus something like Rode, which is very well known. They have a very solid company behind them. So if anything happens, you know, they're gonna be there to back you up, you know, warranty wise, things like that. This is kind of an unknown for me, this product. So if any problems happen down the road, I don't know, you know, how much I'm gonna be covered. But then again, if the price is lower, then whatever, it doesn't matter quite as much. If you really want to save the most amount of money possible, then I don't think you should be too picky, and this is definitely going to keep you happy. Uh, if you do have the ability to save a little bit more money, maybe it might be worth going for something with that all-metal build in a solid company behind it, like the Rode Video Micro. However, even then, for me, this is kind of like a, I guess you'd call it crash microphone. It's something that I can use and abuse, and if it breaks, then I'm not too down and out about it because I didn't spend, I mean, they sent it to me, thank you, um, but if I had purchased this myself, I didn't spend all that much money for it. So it's not really that big of a deal compared to breaking something that costs more to begin with. So I think this is a really good microphone to have in your kit. Um, if it's the only microphone you're gonna have in your kit, then at that point I might start considering maybe spending just a little bit more money. But uh, that's the microphone. You can make up your decisions based on what your needs are. And I hope that this in review provided enough information for you to make that decision. But if you do have any remaining questions or comments, of course, leave those down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it if you'd like, subscribe to get more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.